Do you, do you know? Do you like it? No. No. Mm. Oh, it's nice, really, isn't it? Here go. Here go. <laughs> <laughs> It's not really lesson time, but after breakfast, Lucy makes her way to the classroom. She's one of a small group of cerebral palsy children taking part in a pilot scheme. Her first task is to get to class as independently as possible. Um, if, I, me. if I can just about do it, I can, I can walk up from the house to the dinner hall, but sometimes I say, could I have some help? But it's really that I can do it really so I can get much better. Oh, I think you're pretty brilliant. Amazing. <laughs> you weren't doing that last week, were you? No. Because <laughs> my teacher was teasing me on Friday, I mean on Wednesday, she said, see if you can walk out the lift by myself and I said, I can't. And she said, have a go. And I, she oh. said, have a go. So I tried, I didn't, I just leaned forward. I couldn't do it. But then after that, but two days later, I balanced, started move my one pole, move my other pole, and then away I was. I was really, I thought it was so good. Did you surprise yourself? Yeah, I was crying when I got in the classroom, I was so pleased. They all arrive at different times, so we get them working straight away to keep their interest when they get in the room. And with the pegs, they've got to learn to sit and balance themselves while using a hand to reach round. It also gives them an idea of body image. They're feeling their own body and finding the pegs on their body. Then they've got to use their fine finger control to be able to squeeze the peg to get it off again. They've also got to know how many they started with and be able to count and subtract and find out how many more they've still got to go to get off. So how many, have you got how many should we give you this time? Three? Um, over the last few years, we've noticed that the disabilities have become far more severe amongst the intake of the children that we have. And so we've had to adjust what we're doing. And we've taken a group of the youngest of those children and we're working on an inspiration from Hungary to try and get everything that we do with them together to make more sense for the children. The FLAME group, standing for Function, Language and Movement Education, only began a few months ago. As the name suggests, the idea is to combine learning with learning to move. It's also combining the skills of the various specialists and helpers into something more closely resembling a Hungarian conductor. No! No! Yes! You've got two on me. We're seeing people of different disciplines, different professions, who are becoming all one profession, as it were. They're able, the teacher is able to think in terms of movement and of speech, and the occupational therapist is able to think in terms of learning skills and things like that. And so that they're all working together, and it's making sense for the children to learn how to do things, how to work things out, how to think. Um, all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, I think you can start. Can you stretch out and put your ring onto a letter that's got a top to bottom line? Stretch They've back. got a lot of hidden disabilities that you don't really see um, and which actually affect how they function quite severely. Um, for example, a lot of the children here have got very severe perceptual problems so that um, they find things like um, 
spotting the difference between parallel lines and lines that are not parallel um, very difficult indeed and of course this has implications not just for understanding usual mathematical things but for really identifying letters and shapes and actually working things out in rows and columns um, so that parents and teachers find that they're not as good at doing things as they would expect and they can't really understand why. Uh, equally well it works the other way of course that children who look very disabled may actually be able to reason very well they may be able to read very well they may be have very good reasoning mathematical reasoning abilities and these aren't really used to the full because the set is on their physical disabilities um, so I think part of my job, or the most important part of my job, is to actually get very realistic aims for the children, try and identify the strengths, try and find ways around areas of weakness, so that they can you know, use their capabilities as fully as possible. Identifying aims is a big part of FLAME, so as well as group activities, each has an individual goal. For Sven, keeping his hands flat on the stool is cause for celebration. <laughs> Jeffrey's task may seem more difficult, but there's no sense of competition. Jeffrey is challenging himself and is elated at being able to achieve something others would take for granted. I've got you. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. <laughs> Sit down now. Sit down, Jeffrey. Sit down. Exhausted. exhausted or not, it's time for the flame group to join the rest of the school for the more conventional lessons. But even a maths class can offer its own physical challenges, not least of them getting into the class and ready to begin. Flame, with its emphasis on striving for independence by giving the children time to do things for themselves, has had a big impact on the class teacher, Nora Leiden. Previously, I used to spend a lot of time at the beginning of each session putting the children into their special chairs or standing frames and dashing around, setting out work, putting work in typewriters. And now I let the children do as much of themselves as they can. Um, and it really is amazing with, with um, practice and a lot of patience and encouragement how much they can achieve. Um, Geoffrey can now put his work into his own typewriter. He can uh, walk into the classroom on a relator and actually seat himself and, and start work. And that's a great psychological advantage. If they are preparing to work themselves, then they're more ready to work and they're, they're tuned in. Michael um, works on a computer. And when he first got his computer, it took him a long time. It took him almost a lesson to write his name. And now he's really very, very proficient. Um, another unexpected advantage is the effect it's had on the other children. Because we, we praise every little achievement, the other children are trying to imitate that and to achieve things of their own. And here you've got two one, so you can choose either to use the 2p, that gives us 32, or you may choose to do that. Which are you going to choose? Michael, you're going to enjoy this part of the exercise, I think. Are you ready for some banana? Trelaws hasn't abandoned the more traditional use of specialists. Michael, who's a member of a second flame group, also has individual help from his speech therapist, Sue Crampton. Make your tongue work hard. Michael has quite a lot of problem maintaining lip closure. As I expect you noticed, his lips tend to twitch and to quiver and he finds this rather difficult to keep his lips closed while he's eating. So this exercise is designed to help lip closure during speech and also while he's eating. And the 
gadget that we were using, the lip sensor, has been very useful in that it gives him an actual feedback for maintaining lip closure. It provides a bit of fun and it is helping to hold this posture for several seconds. The future for these children is uncertain. Conductive education may be one answer, but without more research, the experts prefer to keep as many other options open as possible. I think it's very healthy that programs like yours, programs showing what happens in other countries, raise political awareness, public awareness, and doctors' awareness that enthusiasm and encouragement produce results. I think that we hopefully, in spite of financial difficulties, are moving into seeing that preventing things or minimizing problems is better than simply being good mechanics at dealing with things once they've become irreversible. So I think things are getting better. We're aware of what are really needed for our children. With a little luck, we can help it out. We can make this whole damn Paris is more elegant if you don't mind the price tag, New York more glitzy if you don't mind being mugged, Rio more romantic if you don't mind being mugged again by the ambulance driver. But only Athens has more Greek sculptures, only Florence has more Italian paintings, and only India has more Indian restaurants, because only London collects everything from everywhere. Clive James sends a postcard from London, Wednesday, 9.30, BBC One. In 50 minutes, we've greetings from Paramount City with special guest Jimmy Somerville. First on one, hospital drama at Holby, with a crisis for the staff in Casualty.